Hey everybody, this is Mike Tarallo with Click. Thanks for joining me in the next video in the Do More with Click Tips and Tricks Edition series. In the last video, I demonstrated my Click Nation ClickSense application that allowed me to respond to our Click Nation community members who provided video suggestions on content that I should create. And one of those suggestions were about the color mix expression, which I had to use the other day in a demonstration. So today's video is going to cover the color mix expression. And it's actually fairly simple to use, but I'm going to cover some of the fundamentals and then go into a deeper example. So first off, the color mix expression, or in this case, color mix one, is basically used to return a color representation value known as an ARGB color. And that value is returned from a two color gradient that you define, whether it's you know red, blue, green, yellow, etc and it's based on a value between zero and one. So you can see the representation of the function here, color mix one, the value, and then the color for zero, and then the color for one. And then the resulting output is actually this ARGB value. So let's break that down. So within the tabular data here, I'll cover this in more detail in a few minutes, but let's just add a new column. And let's use the color mix expression for that column. So color mix one, open parentheses, and I'm just going to put in the number zero, followed by the color code expression red, and then blue. If you're not familiar with that, we have a number of different color codes. Now I'm going to press enter, and you're going to see an ARGB value return, and it's going to all be the same, because in this case, I'm actually using the number zero. Now watch what happens in this column right here when I change the number from zero to one. You're going to see it updated that color code. So what we're going to do is we're gonna replace this number here with a value in your data. In this case, for example, the sales measure. And the result is going to be a gradient of colors when we apply this result as a color expression. So to give you an example, if I was just to copy the cell value and go to this chart, you'll see we can go to appearance, colors is set to auto. I'm gonna turn that off. We have a single color, we have color by dimension, we have color by measure, and we can have color by expression. And you can see there's a checkbox. The expression is a color code. Well, that color code could be red or blue. It could be an RGB value such as if you're familiar with uh, 255, zero comma zero, that's gonna show us red. Or we do zero, 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 it's gonna show us black. Or if I just paste in that RGB color, you're going to see the color that comes back from this result, okay? So now we wanna make this dynamic. So now we're gonna put the color mix expression in here. So we'll use color mix one, and I'll just simply open it up with a number one comma, color expression for red comma, color expression for blue, and close it up. And you can see that it's set for blue when it's one. And if I change it to zero, it's red. And there's one, and there's zero again. So now we want to have a value in between zero and one. And we're going to do that with our sales figure. But in order to do that, we basically have to divide the rank of the total sales by the number of total rows to get that gradient. So you can see here in the list, we have our sum of sales. And then we have rank total sum of sales, and that gives us the ranking. And then we have rank total sum of sales divided by number of rows total. And that gives us our decimal between zero and one. So now we could use that expression within our color mix expression. So if I paste that expression directly here, which is using simply our sum of sales and the keyword total and then ranking that value and dividing by number of rows total, we now have a gradient, as you can see here, between red and blue. Now, if I just wanted to change that, I would just change my colors from blue to red or yellow. In this case, I'll just put yellow to blue. 
and you can see the difference. Now being we can use RGB values as well. Here I'll just put in 255 comma zero comma zero, which is just a representation of red. And there is our gradient between yellow and red for the values between one and zero or zero and one controlling the gradient for color mix. So taking that concept one step further by utilizing variables, I'll just go to the variables, probably should create a video on variables too. I might've done that in the past, but we probably could use a refresher. You can see I have V max red, V min red, V max blue, V min blue, V max green, V min green. And those variables are assigned to these sliders. So you can see this slider is Vmax red, and that slider is Vmin red, and respectively for green and blue. These are basically going to input dynamically the RGB values for the minimum and maximum color gradients for your values. So if we just slide all of these to zero, we're just going to get basically black across the board. Now, if we want the max sales to have a reddish color, for example, as you know, RGB, red, green, blue, 255 is the, the full color code for red, comma zero, comma zero. Now, if we wanted the min value to also be red, I just drag it all the way over and you can see all the values are red now. Now, if I wanted to start mixing in these colors, I'm adding now additional values to the RGB variables. So this is just a fun way to show you dynamic capability in the function expression. Instead of actually changing numbers, now we're just changing colors. So this is just changing the different intensities of the values for the RGB colors. And just to show you that under the covers, if we go in to the color mix expression, it's using the same rank total, some sales, but then you can see my RGB values have the variables for the red, green, and blue. Okay, so that's all I wanted to show you. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I did. I always like doing little fun visualization type videos, doing some dynamic capability with variables also. And uh, I hope to the person who suggested this, this meets their needs. And please leave comments or questions where this video is posted and I'll do my best to accommodate. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next video. Take care.